we're right. But don't worry about it. We won't even do justice on the other side of glory. We'll sing for all eternity and still not do it justice. So you can sing. We sang this night. Marvelous grace of our loving God. Grace that covers our guilt and sin. You'll never sing that right. You can sing it any time, any way you want. You'll never sing it right. I heard a preacher say one time, he was praying, Lord, I just want to preach Christ as He should be preached. He said, when I get on the other side of glory, just let me preach one more time. I know that there will be no need for a sermon. There will be no need to preach. But just one more time, let me preach over there so that I can preach Christ as He should be preached. He said, and then it hit me. I could never preach Christ like He should be preached, and even on the other side of glory. And that's true. We'll never sing, we'll never capture the idea of grace, mercy, propitiation. His grace would cover my guilt and sin. Tonight I have a, an interesting task, and I delight in it. Um, I want to introduce to you tonight why... Jesus spoke in parables, as Brother Randall read tonight out of Matthew 13. And then I'm going to preach one of the parables. Um, I want you to go with me real quick, or, or go with me and we'll stay there. At John, at Matthew 21, starting in verse 28, and we'll read the text together tonight. And then we'll get into the message. Matthew 21, starting in verse 28. 28 through 32. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went and he said to the first son, Go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. He went to the other son and said the same. He answered, I, sir. But he did not go. Which of these two sons did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and prostitutes will enter, will go into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God before you. For John came by the way of righteousness and the way of righteousness. You do not believe him tax collectors and prostitutes they believed him and even when you saw it you did not afterward change your mind and believe him let's pray dear heavenly father come before you tonight and god you are so gracious father there's so much here tonight god and we can't even capture it all God, as we look on this message and we dwell at the state of what we call the church today, Father, we know that the the church is empty of one of the sons and full of the other. God, we just ask and we plead with you tonight to make these things known to us as we'll see that apart from you making them known, we'll not understand. It's in your name we pray. Amen. First of all, I want to introduce this sermon by explaining why Jesus spoke in parables. What was Christ's intention? As we know, we've all heard that, especially in our day today, you have what we call storyteller preachers. They just get up and they have a text, but, but before they come to a text, they, they, they have a story. And then they try to make a text fit a story. And, and then they'll give reason to that way of preaching, of saying, Jesus spoke in parables so the people could understand. Brother Randall and I were talking about this week, and I can't help but reflect on, on the time when, when God brought Matthew 13 to life to me. When I was young, I say young, I'm, I'm still pretty young, but I was younger. And I was just coming to reform theology and I was a fiery Calvinist. And before I was a Calvinist, I, I was fiery anyways in preaching and I kicked over things and I was just kind of radical. Well, you mix Calvinism with that and it just it goes south. But then you give me this text that Jesus spoke in parables so that they couldn't understand. 
And I was even more fiery. Sometimes I'd preach just so people couldn't understand just to use this text. I'm not Christ. I was wrong. Anyways, we come to this part of the sermon. And Jesus, it says here that He spoke so that they wouldn't understand, so that the ones who would have would have more, and the ones who wouldn't have, what they have would be taken from them. So I'm going to put two points to you tonight. Jesus uses the parable for two reasons. To give more to those who have. What a blessing, right? This is a joy to us. That Jesus can give more to those who have. I want to ask you, why or how can He give more to those who have? And I want to kind of give a blanket to this idea of this introducing the parables by two things. Number one, God is sovereign. I think you guys might be familiar with this statement. God, because He is God, has the right and the might to do what all, whatever He purposes, whether He chooses to reveal that to us or not. So if there was never Matthew 13 and He spoke to reveal parables to give to one and take from another, He could do that without telling us why and it would be fine because He's sovereign. Psalm 115.3 says, Our God is in the heavens and He does all that He pleases. He's completely free to do so. He will do so and He's completely free to do so. So with that blanket, three things that He does to give to those who already have. Number one, He strengthened them in their faith. With the parables, He tells a story to say, I want you guys to understand this. I think of John 10, and, and there's like loss about the sheep and the goats, and He has to go back and explain it to them again. He says, look, I want you guys to get this because I want you to know. I want you to be strengthened in your faith that through these parables you can grow. I want you to be strengthened in your faith. I think also in telling the disciples these parables and and seeing that these Pharisees and these students of the law and the ones who know everything aren't getting it, and that seems to strengthen them to say, you know, I might be a fisherman, but I understand this. You know, I I might be a tax collector, but I understand this. I understand what Jesus is saying. He does it to strengthen their faith. Number two, He does it to sanctify them in their faith. To challenge them. To make them think. To make them examine. To leave them, I promise you, every time they looked and saw a vine and branches, they remembered John 15. He does it to sanctify them in their faith. To grow them. To challenge them. And lastly, He does it to satisfy them in their faith. The parables about when He's coming back, about His finished work, the one who remains in the vine, to give them hope for the future. That's good that He does that, and that's good that He can do that. We would all say amen to those things. We would all say, I delight in these things. We would all say, man, I enjoy those things that in these parables, He's going to strengthen me, He's going to sanctify me, and He's going to satisfy me. We would all agree there. But to His children, He does that. To the others, it says in the text here, that He speaks in parables to take even the things they don't even have from them I have a question tonight Jesus greatest story in the whole world good news it is good news we have a gospel why in the world would God send his only son slaughter him and then want to hide that from people you gotta ask that you gotta answer that question we got two ways we can answer it we can say well that doesn't make me real comfortable and so I just throw it out that can't be right There's got to be another interpretation of this passage because that can't be it. Or we can say our God is in the heavens and He does all that He pleases. If He wants to hide it from them, He can hide it from them. It says in in Proverbs 16.4 that He has prepared everything with a purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. That means He has a reason for suffering in hell for all eternity whether He chooses to reveal that to us or not. He has a reason to blind these, the, these people from hearing and understanding. I, I love what He quotes here in Matthew 13, Isaiah 6. 
We cling to Isaiah 6. Here am I. Send me, Lord. Here am I. I want to go to Africa. I want to go to Indonesia. I want to go to Asia. And I love what God tells Isaiah. Go and say to this people, the house of Israel. You go to this people, and what do you say? He quotes them here. You will indeed hear, but never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, with their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, turn, and I would heal them. Let me ask you something. You take this to the missions conference and present these numbers. That Isaiah went and preached and they could hear but not hear, see but not see, understand but not understand. Take that to the missions conference and see what happens. Why then? Why does Jesus have this authority? Because He's Jesus. That's it. Jesus speaks in parables to hide these things from them and to give to His children. That's a story of redemption. He blesses one and curses the other. Jacob I've loved and Esau hated redeems one, curses the other. He's glorified in both of them. He's glorified in His disciples, Peter, re- hearing Him and saying, what are you even talking about? And Jesus explained to Him, being like, got it. He's glorified in that. He's glorified in His church, hearing these preached on Sunday mornings and understanding, applying them. He's glorified in that. He will be glorified and atheist conventions that are getting together and saying, let me show you how dumb this parable is. You can't even understand it. He's, he will be glorified in that. That's the end of all things. So I come to you to say that tonight, Christ speaks in parables to give to one and take from the other. To give to one who already has, to strengthen them and sanctify them and encourage them, satisfy them in their faith, and to take from the other what he already has. Why? Why can he do that? Because the gospel is all about him. Because in Ezekiel 37, when he says, I'm going to come and save you out of the land of Babylon, he says, I'm not going to do it for you, for your sake, but for the sake of my holy name. Guess what? Not only that, but I will save you and cause you to walk in my ways. Why? Because it's all about me. John Piper, I love the title of his book. I've never even read it.